Hi friends! Today we will learn about plant cells. So let's start. We know all organisms are made up of cells, like a house is made up of bricks. The cell is the smallest unit of life that is self-contained and self-maintaining. It can take in nutrients and convert these nutrients into energy, carry out specialized functions, and can also reproduce. So it is the smallest unit of life. All types of cells are either eukaryotic or prokaryotic. First of all, prokaryotes were the only form of life on the earth that is, organisms made up of prokaryotic cells existed for millions of years until more complicated eukaryotic cells came into being through the process of evolution. So millions of years ago, there were only prokaryotic cells, or the prokaryotic organisms, on Earth. All other living things like plants, birds, animals, fish, insects, all types of plants that later came into being on Earth through the process of evolution are made up of complex eukaryotic cells. The plant cell is unique because only plant cells can manufacture their own food, as plants are autotrophs. Today we will be learning about this plant cell in detail. We learned that the plant cell is a unique eukaryotic cell because only plant cells can manufacture their own food. The plant cell is able to take in carbon dioxide and water and convert them into sugar and carbohydrates using chlorophyll in the presence of sunlight. Sugar and carbohydrates act as food for the plant cell, which is prepared by the plant cell itself. Now let's learn about the unique structure of a plant cell in detail. A plant cell has many different parts, and each part of the cell has a specialized function. These small parts are called organelles, which means small bodies. All these organelles float in a jelly-like liquid called cytosol. This diagram shows the various organelles of a plant cell. Now, let's learn the important organelles of a plant cell. Cell wall. It is the outermost rigid cover that covers the cell. It provides structural support and protection to the cell. Pores in the cell wall allow the movement of gases, water, and nutrients in and out of the cell. The cell wall also prevents the cell from bursting when a lot of water enters the cell. This cell wall is mainly made up of cellulose and protein. All the wood and cotton that we use is this cellulose stored in these cell walls. Next is the cell membrane. It is the layer below the cell wall. It is a semi-permeable layer which regulates the movement of gases, water, and nutrients in and out of the cell. It is composed of proteins and fats. Next is Cytoplasm. All the material inside of the cell membrane, excluding the nucleus, is known as cytoplasm. Cytoplasm consists of a jelly-like material called cytosol and free-floating organelles in the cell, including the nucleus. Cytosol. This jelly-like liquid present in the cell is mainly made up of water and salt. Cytoplasm. This is the cytosol along with the free-floating organelles that provides shape to the cell and also helps in keeping all other organelles in place. Now let's learn about the nucleus. It is a membrane-bound structure that stores DNA or hereditary material of the cell. It is the organelle that coordinates all the cell activities like growth, metabolism, protein synthesis, and reproduction or cell division. Next is plastids. Plastids are membrane-bound organelles that are responsible for the manufacturing and storing of important chemical compounds used by the cell. Plastids are one of many, but the two important ones that we will learn about today are 
chloroplast, and chromoplast. These two plastids are called colored plastids, and other ones are called colorless plastids. Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are plastids that contain chlorophyll, the most important pigment required in photosynthesis, and these are organelles which carry out photosynthesis. They use the sunlight to combine water and carbon dioxide to make carbohydrates and oxygen. Chloroplasts are found only in plant and algae cells. A chloroplast also consists of its own circular DNA. So it is also a type of cell that has evolved from its ancestor prokaryotes. Next, we have chromoplasts. Chromoplasts synthesize red, orange, and yellow colored pigments and are responsible for giving color to the fruits and vegetables. So we have learned about two kinds of plastids. The rest of the plastids are colorless plastids. We will learn that in our following grades. Next, we have the central vacuole. A plant cell may have many vacuoles, but the main and the biggest vacuole is known as the central vacuole. It may occupy more than 30 to 90% of the cell's volume. It is surrounded by a membrane called tonoplast. The most important role of central vacuole is the storage of food. It also stores the pigments that color flowers. The central vacuole contains large amounts of a liquid called salsat. Salsat may also contain toxins that protect some plants from being eaten. Ribosomes. These are the smallest membrane-bound organelles, also called the protein factories of plant cells. You can see dots in the cell. These are ribosomes. Ribosomes are produced by the nucleolus inside the nucleus, from where they are transported to the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, they may be floating freely or attached to the membrane of the rough ER, as in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it is here in the membrane of the rough ER where ribosomes synthesize protein. We will learn about the synthesis of protein by ribosomes in our higher grades. Now let's learn about the endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER. Endoplasmic reticulum is a network of sacs close to the nucleus. It manufactures, processes, and transports chemical compounds for use inside and outside of the cell. Ribosomes attach to the surface of the ER and produce proteins. The endoplasmic reticulum is of two types, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum means ribosomes are attached to its membrane. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum means no ribosomes are attached to its membrane. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum makes hormones and lipids and distributes them to other parts of the cell. Protein is produced on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum by the ribosomes attached to its surface. Endoplasmic reticulum is also known as intracellular circulatory system. Next part of the plant cell is the Golgi apparatus, or the GA. It is also sometimes called the Golgi complex or Golgi body. It is present in all types of eukaryotic cells. GA is made up of many cup-shaped membrane-covered sacs called cisternae. GA is called the post office of the plant cell. Now what is a post office? Post offices receive letters, sorts them, and sends them to their destination. Similarly, the Golgi apparatus in a plant cell receives protein, sorts them, and sends them to their destination inside or outside of the cell. Next is mitochondria. These organelles are called powerhouses of the cell. Powerhouses provide energy to the cell by breaking down carbohydrates 
and sugar molecules. Next, we have the lysosome. Lysosomes are often called the suicidal bags. They digest axis or worn out organelles, food particles, and also engulf viruses or bacteria or any foreign bodies in the cell. So it is the organelle involved in the digestion and waste removal. So we have learned the basic and important organelles of a plant cell, but there are many more organelles in the cytoplasm. We will study about them in our higher grades.